Hello, and welcome to this video all about context menus within the Brentum scheduler. Let's start learning. First of all, what context menus are available within the component? There are a total of four of these. The first appears when I right click on this header bar here. This is known as the time axis header menu. Anytime I right click within any of the white space of the scheduler, this opens up what's called the Schedule Context menu. And if I right click on an event, we get the Event Context menu. Finally, if I right click on any of these resources on the side, we get what's called the Cell Context menu. Just like everything else about the scheduler, all these context menus are completely customizable. And we're going to show you everything you can do with them in this video. Inside my code editor, you can see the code that powers the app that we just looked at. It's a simple starter project using Vite and React, and we have the Brentum Scheduler component already on the page, along with some nice sensible defaults for the props. Let's take a look then at turning off all of those different context menus. We can do that with their corresponding prop, setting their value to false. Back in the browser, sure enough, when I right click on this top bar, the time axis header menu does not appear. And then same thing for the schedule menu and the event menu as well. Lastly, we no longer get the cell menu either. Besides disabling these menus altogether, we can also add, remove, or customize the items within each of the individual menus by providing an object instead of a boolean. In order to only remove a single item, we could target it under Items, specify the name of the item we'd like to remove. So for the event menu, one of the options is to edit the event. That is named much like you'd expect, edit event. And then we would just disable it by providing a false value. This time in the browser, when I right click on an event, the context menu appears, but it appears without the edit event item present. If you'd like to find out what the names of each of these default items are within these different context menus, you can check out these docs right here. This is found under Guides, Customization, and Customize Context Menu. In it, you can see the different items within each of the different types of menus. These default menu item names can also be helpful not only for disabling them altogether, but you can also customize the default items to your needs. If you check out this API documentation found under API Docs, Core, Widget, and Menu Item, you'll be able to see all of the available properties that you can configure to customize the different menu items. There are common properties, things like the text, which allows you to customize the label on the different menu items. There are ways to customize the style of those items. You're also able to customize the layout of the items, doing things like reordering the items in the list by providing different weights in order to move them higher or lower. Let's try out customizing a menu item by customizing the date range item in the time axis header menu. First, we target items, and then the item by the name of date range. Let's try changing up the text to say start slash end instead of date range. Let's also provide a weight of 190, which is going to move it up a bit in the menu. Right now, it's at the very bottom. Let's see where this puts it once we save the file. Finally, let's provide some custom styles here. Let's say, give it a background blue. Why not? Back over on the browser. Sure enough, when I right click on the time axis header, we have a blue item in here. It has the label of start in, and it shows the date range when we hover over it. Also notice it's moved from the bottom of the list to the middle. Finally, you can even add brand new items to any context menu. 
This is possible by adding a context menu item name that doesn't already exist. Then you can provide to it any of the properties that we've already looked at and that you've seen in that documentation. This of course allows us to customize things like the icon, the text, and so on. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, we always need to provide an on item callback function. This is going to receive the event record in the case of an event menu item and allow us to perform certain actions on it. For instance, we could call the dot shift method and move this event one hour ahead. Back over in the browser, when I right click on an event, our new menu item is present, and when I click it, sure enough, the event moves ahead by an hour. That about covers all of the ways that you can customize the context menus. But did you know you could even make your context menu items dynamic at runtime? This is possible with the event called on event menu before show. Let me show you how that works. First, we need to provide it an event handler. Then, just above where we return the JSX, let's define the event handler. And as an argument, it's going to get access to the items in the context menu. Now we can modify those items however we please, doing the things that we've already done directly in the props. Let's show how this can be dynamic, though, by pretending we have some kind of reactive state called access granted. And essentially, we only want to show the edit event menu to some users who have access granted. Now what I can do is check to see if the user has access granted. And if they do not, then we'll turn off the edit event menu item. Oh, and we should register access granted as a dependency of the callback function. This is a typical React setup. Perfect. Back in the browser, when I have access granted set to true, when I right click on any event, we do indeed have the edit event menu item. If I open up the dev tools and toggle this to false, sure enough, that menu item is gone. Wow, there is really so much we can do with these context menus. But honestly, it doesn't even stop there. You could even completely replace these context menus with your own implementation. That is, however, beyond the scope of this video, but you could get a written walkthrough of just that by visiting the documentation and then under the guide section, customization, and then replace context menus, you could read all about it. And that's all there is to it. Now you know all of the different ways that you can customize the context menus for the Brentum scheduler in your own React apps.